Okay. Now well, I'm going to begin today. We're going to talk today about sadness and acceptance. So I want to begin today by doing a reading. And I picked a reading from February 17th from the language of letting go. Acceptance. A basic recovery concept that never loses its power to work miracles is a concept called acceptance. You'll not achieve acceptance in a moment. We often have to work through it, through many feelings, sometimes anger, outrage, shame, self-pity, but above all, sadness. But if acceptance is our goal, we will achieve it. What is more freeing than to laugh at our weaknesses and to be grateful for our strengths? And know the entire package called us, with all of our feelings, thoughts, tendencies, and history, is worthy of acceptance and brings healing feelings. To accept our circumstances is another miraculous cure. For anything to change or anyone to change, we must first accept ourselves, others, and the circumstances exactly as they are. And then we need to take it one step further. We become grateful for ourselves and for our circumstances. We had a touch of faith by saying, I know this is exactly the way it's supposed to be for the moment. No matter how complicated we get, the basics never lose their power to restore us to sanity. Today, God, help me practice the concept of acceptance in my life. Help me accept myself, others, and my circumstances. Take me one step further. And above all, help me to feel grateful. I wanted to read that because one of the two things I just want to mention real quick. Acceptance is a very elusive word, very powerful word. You'll notice in page 417 in the big book of AA, they spent a lot of time talking about acceptance. It's one of the hardest things to do in life is to come to an acceptance, to come to peace, to come to serenity. It's a word I really can't explain too well, but really in reality, it's something you have to feel and be in touch with. And I'll try to give you some examples to show you how that works. But the thing I love about acceptance, acceptance means I've come to that point in my journey where I'm now ready to move forward. And most of us have a tendency to stay stuck. So one of the things I've shared a lot of times is, I've often said this, one of the greatest libraries on the face of this earth is referred to as the human library. Every one of us has a story. Your story, my story, all of our stories are the greatest stories on the face of this earth because they're yours. And the more we're able to share our stories with each other, we'll experience that every one of us goes through joy, goes through uh, sadness, goes through growth, goes through changes, goes through disappointments and goes through losses. Isn't it great to be a human being? It means that we're going to go through these things whether you want to go through them or not. It's part of the journey. So things can't always just stay where they're supposed to stay. And what beautiful thing about it is we learn that we learn from each other's stories. That's why any time in addiction or grieving or whatever it happens to be, when I'm able to interconnect with other human beings, I hear their story, I can connect the different parts of their story. I can learn from them, they're learning from me, I'm always learning from each other. Because basically we have to realize the fact that all of us have to learn to get in touch with one of the most powerful feelings on the face of this earth. The feelings of sadness, the feelings of loss, the feelings of being able to say goodbye, be able to do closure. Many times this may involve our children, it may involve family members, it may involve people we went together with for a long period of time. It may involve relationships, it may involve a lot of things. So I'm going to spend some time today talking about a word that most of us don't want to talk about. The word is death. You know, death is a word sometimes that has a lot of meanings to it, but many of us only look at it in one way. Physical death means our life coming to an end. But in the course of our journey in life, we go through many, 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 many different deaths. What is death? It's an ending. And so over the course of the journey in life, we go through changes, a lot of endings, a lot of new beginnings, 
this process is on and on and on. It's part of the process of life. And so many of us keep wanting to go back. We can't go back. And so we get frustrated and we go through changes because I want things to be the way I want them to be. Isn't life weird though? It never really listens to us all the time. It kind of takes us where we're supposed to go, even though I don't want to go there. It's amazing you come right down to it. I look back on my own journey, look on the journey of many of us, and I realize, whew, what an adventure. A scary one, a powerful one, sometimes a tremendously sad one. But sadness is part of life. Sadness is part of closure. It's okay to be able to look at things that you've done in the past and be able to say goodbye to them. And I've learned over and over again, only until I can say goodbye can I say hello. And many of us have tons of unfinished business. And because we never finished the business, we have a hard time moving forward and look more at other things in the course of the direction. Does that mean I have to like some of these changes going on in my life? No. But they're real, they're reality, they're part of life. What I love about the grieving process is it will take place whether you realize it or not. And we experience that on many different levels. You know, I found that more and more in the course of the journey of life that basically we see so many deaths taking place. The death of your childhood, the death of your teenage years, the death of your young adulthood, the death of your middle age, and then the death of your old age. But for some people, they don't get to do all those deaths. For some people, they go through the process of death, the finalization of death, at a very young age. And we ask ourselves questions, why? How many times have we said too, why? How come my parents should go before the child? And many times it goes the other way. Horrible experience. And yet, we have no answers. And the thing that had the hardest for me in life, especially being a codependent, was I always look for answers to everything. I always ask that question, why? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? And the hardest part of life to be able to do is come to an acceptance of whatever was, was, whatever is, is. Whatever will be, will be. I can do the footwork the best I can every day. But things will happen and things will move forward and things will go where they're supposed to go in spite of us, even though we may try to keep them back. Now, I find this amazing. My grandson, Casey, who was my fir our first grandchild, was born prematurely. He was one pound, 13 ounces when he was born. I actually held him in my hand like a little slab of butter, you know, and it's just unbelievable. Even when he left the hospital after months in the hospital, they had no clothes that could fit him. They couldn't buy him anywhere. So they took the clothes off my stuffed animals and put them on him. And over the course of the years, watching him grow, till two years ago, I got to be part of his wedding ceremony. He's 26 now, he's married. He's in a whole different world of his life today. And he, I can't hold him in a slab of my hand anymore, that's for sure. You know, he can probably hold me in a slab of his hand now. He's big enough. But the bottom line is, it's amazing how something that small can be transferred into something that big and huge and also be at a different stage of the journey in life. And look at us. At one time, we were that little child coming out of a mother's womb, crying. Didn't know where we were, what was going on. Now, all of a sudden, we're here on a Zoom meeting. Now, you talk about life and the concept of life. Wow. That's why when I talk about death, I try to talk about it in a positive way. One of the hardest things for us to do 
is to say goodbye to things, to let them die, let them come to an end so something new can be born. You know, I went through old photographs. It's great to go through them, believe me. And believe it or not, it looked pretty damn good when I was a young priest. I had hair on my head, you know, I, I, I looked pretty sharp, you know. And then I, I, I put the pictures down and I said, what happened? Let's see what happens in life. It's a process, we go through it. It's all part of saying goodbye. I can't go back there and I can't be that. I can't, everything in life that has happened to you has happened to me, to each of us. Even the most terrible losses, the tragedies, the hurt, the pain, the struggle. Even those things can either be teachable moments, we can learn from them, grow from them and move forward, or they can become destructive and they can actually hurt us in very many different ways. And that's why it's so important to be open to this process. And it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to say goodbye. It's okay to realize that we're going through transition and change. You know, I was in the lecture hall the other day. I was looking at the plaques on the wall. And it's amazing how many plaques on that wall are people that were either teenagers, young people, people in their early 20s, many of them died maybe of drug overdoses or drive, died in other different ways. And the bottom line is, I realize more and more now that so many of them had shortened lives. And there's sadness in that. There's sadness in so many things in life. Sometimes there's sadness we have to experience sickness and different things we go through. This body is human. This body goes through changes. This body gets hurt. This body has joy, it has celebration. It's such a wonderful mixture of so many things. But unfortunately, because of the world we live in, because the world does this too, we get stuck in negative. We get stuck in negative behavior. And sometimes we have to let go. Have you ever experienced this as a parent? I know you have. Your child is behaving a certain way, doing certain things, and you wish you could go in there, grab them, and straighten them out. And yet, they're adults, it's their journey. They're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna go through their struggles. And we can't fix them, we can't save them as much as we'd like to, and many of us try. But the bottom line is, we have to be able to let them go, to let them go on their journey. And will they get hurt? They may. They may go through a lot of things in life. You know, being powerless is really scary, yet it's beautiful at the same time. But I've learned in the course of my journey, only until I come to sadness, and feel that sadness and be in touch with it. Can I eventually come to peace and acceptance? You know, for many of us, it may take years. Who knows? Grieving is a powerful process. And sometimes we try to be something we're not. I mentioned last week about the midlife crisis. You try to go back and be a 20 year old again or whatever it is again. You wonder why you can't do it. You wonder why you get into trouble, why you go through different kinds of changes. Many of us in relationships want everything to always be just the way it was when we first met each other. We went through a lot of that yesterday with Valentine's Day. You know, you go back and, you know, geez, we, we, we had this great energy when we got married. We don't have that same energy now. Why? Because you're not supposed to. Because you go through a transition, you go through change. You might have moments of that, but that's okay. But basically life takes you in a different direction. It's part of the process we go through in life. Everything's always changing. Everything changes. Relationships, jobs, things of this effect. I look at starting point and just the transition and the change of this one place over the course of my journey. You know, I went to the lecture hall the other day, I looked at all the plaques on the wall, but especially of all the different counselors. 
And there's 13 plaques up there of counselors who served this starting point while I was here. And it's amazing. The memories, the stuff that goes along with that. Remembering things, going back over things. But even the progression of things, how they move forward and how you have to kind of learn how to get out of the way to let them happen and let the process take you where they can be. You can be a support system and you can also realize the fact we need a support system. Parents who lost children need a support system like Parent to Parent and programs to that effect. Now and on, now and on. Programs to help them meet other parents, other people. When you, when you know you're not alone going through this, it's so much easier to go through it. But when you have no help, you're doing it by yourself, it makes it 10 times harder. And that's where it's so important to learn that as we go through the grieving process, we're all gonna to come to that stage of sadness, that stage of hurt. It's okay to feel sad. You know, I remember one time a lady came in and she was talking to some people and we do this a lot, I know we do. And they said to her, she was talking about her feelings and how she's hurting and this and everything else. And people told her, don't feel that way. Look at life wonderful, great and fantastic. Make believe. But you know, it's okay. There's a time for that too. But right now, there's a need for her to feel that sadness, to cry, to feel, to go through that. God, how wonderful feelings. And yet so many times in life, we have a tendency to want to avoid those feelings and not be in touch with them. So what do we do? We stay busy, not to feel. I know I look at the transition of starting point and the things we had to change, the things we had to go through and the process with it. You know, it started out in South Philly as a little house, you know, and it's amazing. You know, I, I, quite a while ago, we had a, a memorial service here for a general from South Philadelphia, who was part of the woodworker starting point for a long period of time. And for, we used to nickname him, we call him the, the godfather of recovery. A heck of a guy. And after the service was over, a guy came up to me and he saw in the lobby, we have a brick from the original starting point, kind of a memento of the original place and a photograph of it. He came up to me and he said, do you remember Vince, that side door going into that building? I walked through that door with you. You were a priest way back then. I went through that door and did my fifth step with you. I, I was beating myself up like crazy. And you said to me, good, feel the feelings, go through them, don't deny them. He was trying to run away from them. I said, no. He said, I'll never forget that, Vince. I've been sober ever since. My life has changed dramatically. You know, little things like that open up so many doors to bring us to an acceptance of our addiction and acceptance of our life and acceptance of what we can do and we can't do. And boy, it's hard, it's not easy. Because once I come to acceptance, I have to come to adjustment. Isn't that amazing how life is? You're always adjusting. Things are always changing. Things move in new directions. Said so at one time you could do something, now you can't do it. This happens here. We experience a sickness, a disability. Something begins to happen to us. It's part of the journey. It's part of life. You, know, you might think you're going to be healthy forever and ever and ever and ever, but you're not. Go to have aches and pains. You're supposed to. It's all part of life. It's part of the journey. But see, the hardest part is to be open to that and let it happen. But see, I'm no different than you. We all are. We're going to fight it. We're going to battle it. We're going to go through it. But it's like transition takes place. And I've learned over the years, don't worry about it. Just do what you can do every day. Go to sleep. Everything will find its way. And I found out about everything I've done in the course of my journey. Everything does find its way. 
And only when you're ready can you be ready. You know, people come up to me a lot of times and they say this to me, and I get a smile out of it. They say, what's going to happen to starting point when you die? I always say to them, I don't know, I'll be dead. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's going to go where it's supposed to go. Things will happen the way they're supposed to happen. Nobody knows. You can't predict anything. So for now, I'm not dead. So let's just enjoy it right now. And keep it that simple. And see what happens. You know, we can organize everything. And we think sometimes we can try to organize our life, organize the future, organize different types of things. Hey, we try it. But guess what? Even that changes. Everything changes. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, I talked to Loretta about that the other day. We had a board meeting, and they're working on all these plans, these different types of things and everything else. Well, that's really nice, wonderful. But there'll be adjustments and changes and things through them throughout the whole entire process. They won't go just the way people thought they were going to go on that day. They'll go somewhere, but we'll see where they're going to go. And that's okay. It's how it's supposed to be. And so we're on a journey. Our body's on a journey. We're in different places in life. We can reminisce. We can go through different types of things. But we have to realize something which is so important. We have to learn how to let go. We can't move forward unless we learn to let go. And I can, you know, Alanon says it so beautifully. Detach with love. Let people make their mistakes. You know the old saying, you can lead the horse to water. Can shove his head in the water, you can't make him drink the water. Same thing as regards life. And the biggest part about the whole thing I really realized today is, can you really understand it? No. You have to live a life you really can't understand it. It doesn't work that way. And so all we can do is continue the journey, walk the journey, stay connected on the journey. And then wherever it's supposed to lead us, it will take us. Now, people say, well, does that mean all you do is sit back, and let everything happen? No. Be a participant in life. Continue this process of being a constant participant. But remember, when you're participating, you've got to be able to go with the flow of it and make adjustments. It's not going to go just the way you want it to go. So there's this struggle that goes on inside of each and every one of us. A struggle for understanding, a struggle of trying to fix, a struggle for this, a struggle for that. All struggles are good. Of course, through struggle comes growth. Whatever, and we have to be able to learn that yesterday is over. I can learn from it. I can grow from it. It can become a teacher to me, but I have to be able to move forward. You know, I'm looking at pictures the other day and I saw me in a New York Yankees baseball uniform. I did Dream Week with the Yankees when I was 55 years old. I played ball with them. I look pretty good, you know. But then other things happened in my life. I don't look so good anymore. That's all a part of the journey. And all of us can relate to all of this. You know, we have those moments where we're able to accomplish something and get it done. As soon as we accomplish it, Something else happens. We're going to go through loss. I mean, we went through a lot of sadness this weekend with the, with the Super Bowl. But guess what? I checked it. The world's still on its axis. Things are still functioning. Life is going to go on. Isn't that amazing? And then there'll be something else that will take its place. It's part of life. And so what I really want to emphasize today is that tremendous need to do closure, that need to say goodbye, that need to be able to release. And doing closure is never easy. It means I'm watching a part of me die so a new part can be born. I'm watching a part of my journey in life come to an end so something new can be born. Is that easy? No. You know, for 38 years, I ran Starting Point, and then I had to step down. Was it easy to step down? No. 
Part of me kept wanting to put my nose in everything, but I kind of keep my nose out of it. I gave the reins over to somebody else. And she keeps coming back and asking me questions. I say, you're in charge, go do it, go do it. Certain, it, it things move, it's a new journey. I don't want to be in charge anymore. I want to be able to do other things. And yet we realize in life, we still have responsibilities. Things still come into play. But even though something doesn't work, it's because it wasn't supposed to work. And now maybe it's time to look for something new to move on to. The hardest part is that acceptance gift, that powerful gift of acceptance. Because so many times in life, I've got to come to that place of peace, that place of serenity, that place of acceptance. I don't have to accept the fact of what is, is. What I can do, I can do. What I can't do, I can't do. That means I also have to learn, learn, learn the meaning of the word, help, help, help. Don't be afraid to say it. It's not a curse word. It's actually a beautiful word because none of us are on this journey alone. And we need each other. And none of us are any better than anybody else. We have different talents and different gifts, yeah. But every one of us is necessary. And every one of us can learn from different situations in the course of our life. And that's where that, get that grieving process, going through those stages, especially getting to the sadness stage, I can finally feel something in my life coming to an end and be able to allow something new to be born. People in relationships know what I'm talking about. If you lose someone through death in a relationship, now comes the major adjustment of a new lifestyle. Even though you may have said, I'm going to leave it the way it is forever and ever and ever. I remember a lady saying to me, she talked to her husband, anything happens to him, I'm not moving, I'm staying right here. I'm going to do everything I've been doing like I was doing it before. By the way, she doesn't live there anymore. She moved. She changed her lifestyle. And after a good nine years, she has a relationship with somebody else now. Huh. But see, way back then you said, I'm never going to do that. Never say that word never. There's a saying in AA, there are no nevers and no forevers. There's just todayers, today. And as a result, that's all we can do is work on that journey for this time and be able to realize the fact it's okay to watch something come to an end. It's okay to say goodbye to it. It's okay to say a prayer and give it to God. It's okay to try my best, but it doesn't happen overnight. It'll happen when you're ready for it to happen. You know, I'm learning over and over again. You know, sometimes we get ourselves all bent out of shape over life. But life has so many doors, so many different ways, so many openings, so many closures. It's just amazing, isn't it? And that's the kind of adventure we have to have inside of us. To realize the fact that, why am I where I am today? Why did he leave me so early in life? Why did my relationship not work? I have to come to that point where I can finally say goodbye and say hello to something new and something more beautiful. Because I'm convinced if you allow something to die, something beautiful will flow from it. But the thing that gets us in trouble, we try to keep everything else alive. Keep it going. Do what you can do. You know, I remember a good nine years ago a lot of my classmates got together we decided to go back to our old parish in camden we all grew up there it was an italian parish back then now it's a spanish parish we went there and we helped out and we tried to do different things we tried to revive some of the old customs and do things in that direction and it was nice it really was but then we found out we can't go back the stuff we did back then, we can't do anymore. Because now, the people that have taken the parish over, the Spanish community, they have new traditions. 
And after we took part in them for a while, I like them. They're pretty neat. And yet, the change process. How come things aren't the way it used to be? We went to our school next door, you know, and we saw the classrooms we used to be in. Some of us tried to sit in the chairs. A little tight, what can I tell you? Things have changed a little bit since then. But I realize now, it's not our school anymore, now it's a charter school being run totally differently. It's a whole different setup. And so we have to be able to leave that building and say goodbye. Can't go back. It's sad, it's part of grieving. Maybe we need to do it sometime. Some of us try to go back. But yesterday's over, it's done. I don't care what you did. I don't care if you think you're the worst person on the face of the earth. I gotta hate telling you this, because someday, somehow, somebody will come along and top it. They always do. So you're not gonna qualify for the worst person in the whole world, sorry. And there is no such thing. We're just people hurting, going through changes physically. You might be in the greatest of physical health. And then all of a sudden, something happens. You gotta deal with a sickness. Something to that effect. I remember a gentleman, you know, he says he's 90, 94 now, 93, something like that. Anyway, got the same name as me. <clears throat> he lives in my community. And boy, he was a dynamo when he first moved there. He moved back, moved there back when he was 55 years old. He was a dynamo, involved in everything, doing everything all the programs, everything, all the dances, you out there dancing, carrying on, doing all kinds of stuff. And now he still comes, but he's kind of quiet now, kind of sits in a corner. He's not as active as he used to be. He said, he feels so sad sometimes. He said, but I know if I try to go out there, I want to get hurt. He said, my body's aching, I'm going through changes. But I feel sad. And I wanted to kiss him on the forehead and say, wonderful, it's great. You're grieving your past. You're grieving your history. You're grieving so many different things. And sadness comes along with that. And eventually comes the gift of acceptance, the gift of peace, the gift of tranquility. I know it's so crazy about this whole thing of grieving. Once you come to acceptance, then something else you have to deal with and grieve some more to deal with that. Isn't that how it's supposed to be though? That's why you have to have a sense of humor. Even learning how to laugh when it's not funny. Because life is that. And I'm a good codependent. I see plenty of other good ones here. And the bottom line is so many times we really try to organize life. We try to control life, try to make it be what I want it to be. We try to do this. And then it doesn't work. And then we get angry, we get upset, we go through changes. There comes a point we just have to accept the fact that it didn't work. It's time to move on. And that's okay. So take a few moments and take a look at your history. Take a look at where you came from, your experiences, your strengths, the things you experienced, and have the courage to face them, learn from them, grow from them, I'll be able to move on. Be able to say goodbye, be able to do closure. It's only in saying goodbye you can say hello. And so this whole entire grieving process is so important because we need to be able to allow ourselves to go through it. And I have found in my own life that 12 steps as a powerful source of grieving. They help me to look at my life make peace with it, and then be able to move forward. Like that gentleman who did the fifth step with me and is still around the rooms of recovery. Like he said to me and I said to him, he said, things have really changed, haven't they, Vince? They're not the way they used to be. I said, correct. And that's exactly where they're supposed to be. So we keep it simple work in that direction. 
And so I hope this series on grief helps you understand the grieving process a little bit better. Pat, as I said, will be here next week. She'll conclude the series and open it, open it up for questions and answers from you too. See what happens from there. So in the spirit of grieving, in the spirit of loss, in the spirit of growth, let us pray. God, the God of our understanding, comes before us and tries to help us to go through this beautiful process of life. Help us in what we do and try to teach us that it's okay to go through our feelings. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to get upset. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to go through all these different feelings. It may take time for them to come to acceptance. And that's okay too. But know, and now we ask you every day, that you might be our guide and be our strength and help us. And be patient with us, please, God. Please be patient. If we're all a human, we do make mistakes, we go through changes. But above all, teach us to respect each other, to help each other, and to be a constant support for one another in all that we do. And so we pray for the power of grief, the power of loss, to help us to become better people through our experiences. We ask this and we pray this every day. We pray in your name. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference.